All right, so my name is Danielle. This is my Dalmatian Bradley. Um, we're here at the Pet Expo, just kind of making new friends, building connections. Um, I'm a dog trainer. I own Sunny Days Dog Training. Um, I've been training dogs since 2014, but I just opened my own company in 2022. Um, so we're going on our two year anniversary. Uh, I started in 2014 working for this really awesome company. Um, the company would pull last call dogs, like dogs that were just really got the short end of the stick in life and they ended up on the euthanasia list or they just kept getting returned and the shelters were like, these dogs are unadoptable. Um, a lot of times they just needed like an outlet for the energy. So that company I worked for, we'd pull dogs, we'd pull cats. We would train them to do super, super fun behaviors like jump rope, um, weave between your legs when you walk, like be really entertaining and take them around the country, um, show off what they can do. And then we would adopt them out into homes. And that was a really special company and that's what started my dog training career because um, there was nothing wrong with the dogs at all. They just needed a job and we were able to provide them with that. Um, so I did that for six years and then I went to a behavioral facility where I started learning about aggression and anxiety and stress in dogs and like how they kind of work and feel and think. Um, and then also not related to that, I started learning about service dogs because they can help people in a lot of ways that people don't even think that they can help them. Um, so I was there for a couple years and I was like, you know what, there's so much more that I want to do that I'm limited to here. I'm just going to open my own company. Um, so I did and that's where Sunny Days came from. Uh, eventually it'll be, I'll have a nonprofit side for service dogs. Um, Days will be an acronym for dogs at your service. So it'll be like Sunny Dogs at your service. Um, and it's because one, we're in the Sunshine State, so it's Florida and it's bright and it's fun. But also service dogs can help people so much that it's like, hey, sunnier days are ahead. So that's where the name came from. Um, and I've been doing that for two years. I do service dogs for a lot of uh, different disabilities, both both visible and invisible, um, as well as things that wouldn't necessarily count as like a disability, but the dogs can still help. Like I have a, um, a walnut t detection dog, so he's able to check, make sure food is safe before his handler eats it. Um, I've done some for POTS, some for PTSD, anxiety. I've done some mobility dogs, done an narcoleptic alert and response dog. Um, so I do a lot of like, a lot of people will come to me and be like, hey, like I could have a, a dog could help me in this way. What do you think? And I'm like, no, I think that's totally valid. Let's work on it. Um, so I do that. I also do a lot of production works, so taking dogs and um, kind of like here at the expo, I was here to have some models here, but I've done some TV shows. I've done some commercials, um, modeling gigs for like pet food brands, um, movies. So I do a lot of that as well. Um, we are here. Uh, the reason I do what I do is because I feel like a lot of dogs are super misunderstood. Um, I work with a couple of really nice rescues. My favorite one is Forever Bully Love. They're here in Orlando. Um, they only pull dogs that are on the euthanasia list um, or have really hard medical issues. So the shelters, they're just not equipped to handle it. So they either put them out for rescues or they do end up getting euthanized um, just because Unfortunately, in a government-ran shelter, there's there's not a lot you can do with a dog that shows up with a broken leg or that has its jaw broken or something like that. Um, so I absolutely adore them. A lot of these dogs that end up on the euthanasia list, there is absolutely nothing wrong with them. They just are maybe are a little bit misunderstood because people don't understand properly like how to know what a dog is thinking and feeling, which is what my personal biggest mission is. It's making sure that people understand like, hey, your dog is not actually aggressive. He's just terrified. Like he's really nervous. And instead of being like, hey, I need some space, like it might not have been respected. So now he feels like he needs to defend himself. And then people label that as aggression. And you're like, no, you just need to help build this guy's confidence up, show him that he doesn't need to go zero to a hundred and he can he can take a break, he can take a breath and understand that people are gonna respect his social cues. So that's something that's like really important to me.